Hello everyone, I'm Denise Love, and what do you think about doing a color palette challenge today? So let's get started. I'm in the mood for a color palette challenge, and I'm in the mood to cut some art up, so we're going to combine all the things I love into one project. So this is the color cube. I'll link that under the description for you in the description for the video, and I'm just going to do a blind pull. I'm in color cube volume one. I do have both of them. Somebody asked me if I knew what the difference was, and to be honest, I don't. I just wanted all 500 palettes that they had, so I don't know if one... Uh, cube is more muted and one's more bright or if they're all mixed up I have no idea and I haven't even looked through all the colors because I want to be surprised so I'm just gonna do a blind pull and we're gonna work with that palette whatever it is okay <laughs> palette number 118 it is today so I like using and I love the box I like using the color cube and I've actually ordered some of my own custom color palettes because I'm a photographer so I have tens of thousands of photos through the years and I made a little uh, palette template in Photoshop and then ordered them from Moose so you will see some of those coming up when I get those uh, cards in because it's basically a photo and five colors picked out of the photo. It's not hard to make these yourself. You could also look at the Design Seeds website because they that's like the first people that ever made these color palette fun things that introduced it to us and they have some legacy things even though they don't actively do this anymore. They have a legacy site of their best palettes and you can also look on Pinterest and pull um, palettes um, if you're not wanting to uh, have the deck of cards. I just like, especially filming videos, I like to have this to hold in my hand and to talk about and to match colors to, and it's more convenient in the format that I work. So I have put a big piece of paper down. This is a quarter sheet of my little Jackson sampler pack. This is a quarter sheet of the Saunders Waterford Extra White 200 pound. Um, so the poundage doesn't matter. I just want to give my whole sample pack a test out because, you know, I actually went to the Blick here um, where I live. I think this is a UK company. Um, and they'll send you a sample pack from the UK to the United States. And I thought that was super helpful to have all these different ones. Um, these Jackson's uh, Two Rivers paper. Loved that paper, but I have not been able to find that over here. And I'm sure I could order from them, but eh. I was at the Blick yesterday and got some gigantic sheets of arches. So we'll be playing some more with arches as I go on with these. So it just depends on what you can get uh, versus what you are because the Blick did not have the Saunders, they did not have the Fabriano, they did not have the Milford or the Jackson's Two Rivers papers. So what's available to me is that arches. Um, so if you go by the big sheets, they're 22 inches by 30 inches. This is just a quarter of that. They're great big and the arches ran under $10 a sheet, which I liked because I could get a lot of little pieces out of that and it's actually cheaper than buying it in a pad. Or I could do a big piece of art or I could do like I do and do a big piece that's a hot mess and then cut it up into some pretty yumminess when we're done. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to tape this down just so that it is secure on my ampersand hardboard art panel. And I'm telling you what that is because every single video somebody says, what is that board? <laughs> and I used to use big pieces of cardboard. Um, I like the board because if it gets wet, it doesn't buckle or move. It stays set. It keeps your table clean and I can move it off my table when I'm ready to do something else while it's drying or something like that. So I do like working with that. So I'm going to pull out some paints and decide what I'm going to do today. So I'll be right back. All right, so I tried to be creative with what I pulled out and to use. So this is a true mixed media piece I'm going to be painting today. And I just want you to do the same. It's not my goal to be exact on the colors. But it's my goal to work within this color palette, which I wouldn't normally select. So I want a gray. I want an olive green. I want a pretty red and a maroon and a tan. But it's not necessary for me to hit that color exact. And it may be necessary for you to be exacty, exacty. And if it is, do the challenge in a way that feels good to you. 
just telling you what my thought process is there. And if you don't have, say, an olive green, and with this my goal isn't to mix colors, my goal is to play and experiment and have fun. And if part of that play is mixing colors to you, then do that. This challenge, when you do something like this, you can set your own parameters. You don't have to do it exactly the way I'm doing it. I do love giving you a challenge though, because you guys paint with me and then you come back and say, I painted with you. And I can't tell you how much I love that. And I want to give you some, maybe just a direction to sit and play and have some fun and enjoy your paint process so that you're not coming to the table with no direction and then getting mad when you didn't create some masterpiece. Trust me, I've been there. <laughs> so in the gray, um, I've got a really pretty, I've got these, infu I've got these fusion paints, which are mineral furniture paint basically, but I got little sampler pots and it was a pretty gray, so I pulled it out. So you have a gray paint. I also have this Blick pewter, which is kind of a metallic-y gray. So I thought, okay, there's some choices there for me. I've got this Blick Red Deep, which is really close to that red. These are just the Blick acrylic matte paints. You can use any kind of paints you have. Just pull out colors that are in the right palette. This is the acrylic matte paint Purple Matter. So I love that maroon color. And then I also pulled out Transparent Yellow Oxide. So I'm thinking that kind of looks like that brownish tanny color. Um, so talk about way outside my comfort zone. I did not have, I, I did, but it was in the fusion paints. I've got um, some kind of uh, olive green, but I did think what if, wah ha ha, because you don't have to have everything be a paint. Um, what if we did the graphite extra large blocks that just came in a recent art haul that I did because there is this yummy green in this supply. So I want you to think outside the box. What do you have that could fall within the color palette that isn't necessarily the exact same material as all the other materials that you're using? because another fun thing about these, if you're thinking that's not paint, it doesn't have to be paint. Um, another fun thing about these is they're water soluble. So I can draw on this and I can swish it around with some water. And because I have a 200 pound watercolor paper, I know that it's gonna be able to accept that water really nicely. I'm also kind of looking at this cause you know, we've got that tan color in there. Would one of these colors like this one um, give me that tan? I'm not worried about it hitting the paper because I'm covering the paper. Nope, that's not tan. So I do have some sample sheets over here to give myself, and don't worry if you get something on your paper, we're covering the whole paper, but I'm terrible about talking right over my paper because it's like what's right here in the menu, in the, uh, in the filming screen here. And so I've got chalk on my hands. I use a microfiber cloth to get any kind of powders off my fingers so I can keep working. I'm gonna put my card right here behind us. And we're just gonna cover this and make a mess basically. And then we are gonna cut out some little masterpieces from this. So why don't we just start with the green and that'll just get us kind of going. This paper's nice. I like how thick it is. And then again, I'll just get that off with my fingers. And somebody asked me if I use my watercolor brushes with my acrylic paints, and it really depends on the paint or what I'm doing um, because these are kind of floppy brushes. You know, a lot of times, <gasps> look how pretty that color is. Oh, so pretty. I like that these are water soluble. Check it out. Um, because these are kind of floppy, so they might be too floppy for acrylic paint. So sometimes I do and sometimes I, I don't. <laughs> sometimes I have some separate, less floppy acrylic brushes. Now that is a yummy color. That is right up our alley with that green too. Look at that. <laughs> la la la. All right, I hope you're making fun art noises with me because are you really having fun if you're not <laughs> making your brush sing as it goes? 
<laughs> you know, normally what I would do if I were sitting here painting, not on camera, maybe painting by myself, I'd have the radio on and I'd be singing my favorite songs as I'm painting, jamming out. But, you know, I can't do that in a video because then YouTube dings you for music in the video that you weren't licensed to use. Let's try this. I don't think I'm going to like this, but we're going to try it anyway. This is the uh, transparent yellow oxide. This is a high flow paint because it happens to be um, the right color, I'm thinking, but it's not necessarily the one that I might have picked um, if I had a good choice in another something. So this is just a Aqua Elite Princeton number 12. And before I was using my Princeton Neptune Quill number four. These Princeton brushes are nice. Um, oh, now that is actually kind of interesting. It might be a shade off of what's on my uh, color palette uh, piece, but I don't even care. Once we commit, we're just going to go with it. Unless you've done a little tiny spot and you think, oh, that's way off. Let me reselect. But I'm okay with this color. It's close. My, my goal is to get close and to work within a color palette that I'm just not normally going to do. So I'm going to just start spreading this around, seeing what we get. All right, I know I got a hot mess going here. Um, this is a Stencil Girl Stencil um, S921. Apter, I think that might be the artist name. Um, but I like it because it looks like little squares. And I'm not sure I'm loving anything I'm doing yet, but I'm just going to continue adding layers and maybe doing some stenciling on top, pulling different um, brushes and coming back and making different marks on top and you might be looking at this thinking that's a hot mess and I'm thinking the same thing hot mess <laughs> trust me and on these you know all the way through this I just doubt the whole time like I'm not even sure you, you're going to see this video so if you see this video I did cut something out of here that was like okay think I can live with that or okay I love it or okay I didn't hate it <laughs> So I found a stencil that was kind of like a halftone circle one um, by this Tim Holtz, but the shapes are all irregular and I really, really liked it. And it's called a bubble layer stencil by the uh, Tim Holtz. Um, so I love stencils. I really liked the gray. So I'll put some gray paint and just get some bubbles going. This looks very close to Punchinella. I'm trying to find other options. You can get Punchinella on uh, Etsy and woo, they have lots of different sizes. Like this is my Punchinella. And that's just a sheet that um, they punch stencils out of, which I guess is why they call it punch. They punch stencils out of it. Um, the only place I've been able to find it is Etsy for smaller quantities or you can get big rolls on uh, Amazon uh, and you really only need a little piece so some of these that look like lots of holes look very similar to that and I love it and they're easy to get on some of the stencil sites so just look around for something that's got that yummy 
whole thing, even if you can't find the punchinella where you are, depending on what part of the world you're in. Anything like this would give you a similar look. Okay, so got that in there. All right, I know you're looking at this with me. Hot, hot mess. And we could even, at this point, take some of our viewfinders and just see, is there anything even coming out of this? Like, after, <laughs> after you actually frame it out, you're like, okay yes there is like i love that right there so don't judge it from the big piece judge it from looking around and thinking "Ooh, like somebody said go on the diagonal on something i was doing and i'm like oh, i didn't even think of that check out that right there <laughs> that right there is a good one okay i feel better now so just kind of test things out as you're going. You don't have to wait till the end. You can kind of judge where you're at and then think, what do I want to do next? And get creative with your supplies and your mark making and the things that you paint with. Um, I could try to paint with a catalyst wedge. Let's see this. Let's just see if we can paint with the wedge. I got these for dragging, but if we can drag paint through it and that's pretty cool too okay <laughs> this is the catalyst wedge uh, five um, I just wanted some different wedge choices look at that oh I like that right there right there Oh, ho, ho, ho. I tend to work around and miss the middle. <laughs> do you ever do that? I know you feel it. You feel me. I know you do. <laughs> what other kind of mess can we put in here? I'm still trying to work within my same color palette range. I'm not trying to get out of my colors. How are we doing? <laughs> we got a big mess and I don't even hate it all right let me get let me get down here in my little drawers you know we could do let's say oh let's say you're a pencil person or you're a neo color to pastel person don't forget you know you can pull out other materials if we're thinking color pencils for instance uh, this is a Derwent watercolor pencil. Um, these might be the perfect things to come in and give you extra details. So I know that I don't pull these out a lot, um, pencils and things. It's almost because when I'm filming and thinking and doing, maybe there's too much going on and I don't think, oh, let me get the pencils. But, you know, we could pull something like this into our piece especially if we've got a color that maybe we don't want to try figuring out how to mix it or we want to like that green where I pulled a different supply maybe we should have pulled a pencil for you know the burgundy or the red I mean that could have been fun so look at all your supplies don't be don't be lazy dig in your paints and find a good alternative to you know something that I've done if you're trying to do the color palette with me you're not going to have all the paints that I have, and I might not have all the paints that you have. So definitely get into your little stash and pull out things that are close. Now I'm using a watercolor pencil, which technically makes these water soluble, but I'm, I don't think I'm gonna do the water soluble part on this one. I'm just gonna, it's the, it's the pencil thing that I had closest down here to be able to grab <laughs> to be an example. We could also go with some pastels. Now the thing about, we've already used some chalky stuff in here, um, and then we've got some 
foil pastel -y stuff so you got to be careful with all these different mediums that we're adding um, you can do a finishing spray like a pastel fixative to fix some of these and then you don't want to be touching them because later they could possibly still smudge and smear like these are powders there's no way to lock that powder down hundred percent you can fix it and it's good but you might want to store these in like a sleeve maybe you want to frame it um, powders you do usually want to fix the powders though because the powders continue to shed all right let's see see I kind of want to <laughs> I know it just looks like I'm all over the place going crazy crazy and you know what that's exactly what I am I'm not worried at this point about composition I'm not worried about the colors because our colors have been picked for us I'm not worried about where I'm putting stuff I'm not thinking I'm not stopping to be like where is the perfect spot for this at this point I'm playing and then we're gonna get something amazing out of this when we're done and I want you to tell yourself I'm gonna get something amazing when I'm done and I want you to start thinking in this mindset of doesn't matter where I'm putting stuff now I'm gonna get something amazing later because I'm just trusting the process just trusting that something is gonna work out and what works out might be a bookmark but it doesn't matter the point of this is to learn a new color palette to explore things that we would never normally explore and just be creative and have fun while we're doing it this is not about making some masterpiece every single time we sit at our table okay so now I'm kind of wondering do we want to check this out and see where we're at oh look at all that stuff we got going on there ho 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 I'm coming back over here because I am kind of still loving this over here with this coming right in this side and everything kind of working around it I don't want my focal element to be right in the center like say if I were saying this is my element I don't want it to be in the center um, normally that's the least interesting thing to do it's more interesting if we can offset it but if I'm looking at that thinking ha ha makes the coolest picture in the center then know enough about the rules to then break the rules so at this point I kind of think I do want to cut this up so I'm gonna be right back I'm gonna move all the wet paint out of my way so I don't put my hands in it so I'll be right back all right so I'm gonna pull the tape off this and I started to pull the tape and I thought look at that no paper sticking to my tape so then I thought those of you that might want to know about this paper does the does the uh, uh, tape pull the paper off um, and it is not it is peeling clean I'm getting a clean edge so just for those of you that might want to know that thought I'd share that now we can kind of look at it and weirdly enough I kind of like it as one big piece you know abstract art is not about painting something specific but I think I still want to cut these up now I do have some bigger mats that I got at the Blick this is a 6 by 8 size which is slightly larger than my 5 by 7 um, so I did get a couple of these how did they get this in here because I thought a couple bigger pieces coming out of here I actually got some really big ones um, and we'll save those for a piece that I cut a really big piece of paper that I use a really big piece of paper with because I got a couple sizes um, like this 11 by 14 and then I got a really big one um, it's 12 by 6 for 9 by 12 so you can see these are bigger really than my piece of art um, but I just wanted some more sizes to play in than my little bitty ones for myself those are single mats the only place I've found these double mats um, if you're not having a frame or cut them for you is Michaels in their framing department um, and I do like those double mats but Blick did not have that Blick has this <laughs> and I don't mind if I get the uh, paper dirty um, I'm just using it as my viewfinder and 
seeing is there anything in here that I love love like do I love love that in this size or that I love love that in this size okay crazy enough I think I do love it in the smaller size so even though I just introduced you to the bigger one I'm feeling like this right here is the composition did I glue that down I guess I kind of did <laughs> um, because I love this on this side do I want to cut it off do I want to come down where exactly is perfect it's kind of easier if I'm looking up in my camera screen so I can almost like step back and say yes this is it than it is looking at it down here close to it nose to nose with it all right I'm going for this so let me just get a pencil and I'm and I'm gonna draw this now if I were using that single mat I would um, use a little bit lighter pencil than what I just did and then I would cut outside this line so that there was still some framing that I could do um, so it wouldn't be like edge to edge so it wouldn't be like exactly that edge I was cutting um, I'd cut it a little tiny bit bigger but I'd use a lighter pencil or something I'd, I don't know <laughs> I don't mind the pencil marks uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and draw on there and cut it. But you be creative in whatever way is going to work for you and you are what you want to do with the pieces. Now these have pastels on them, so uh, finishing them I would use a pastel fixative. Um, if I've got chalk pastels, I'd use the chalk one. If I've got the oil pastels, I'd use the oil one. And these are by Sennelier. And they do have, let me just get this. Here's the soft pastel one. It says soft pastels versus oil pastels. And I would probably fix those because with the oil pastels, it kind of lets it set up and dry. Otherwise, they always seem to stay wet. Like the crayon never dries out, you know. It kind of stays that way on your paper. And using that fixative seems to help it dry or at least stiffen up where it doesn't smear. <gasps> oh, yeah! People, people, people. Look at that. Totally outside my comfort zone. Definitely doubted the whole time. But check it out. That is super fun. And look at our color palette with that. We are kind of right on with our color palette. So I'm very happy with that today. And that was a hot mess. I know you were agreeing with me and you're watching me paint that thinking, girl, that's a hot mess. <laughs> now, do I have enough to get this one on the diagonal? Because I kind of liked it when I first did that. Ooh, like maybe right there. Check that one out. I'm kind of feeling that. Okay, let's get our pencil and do it. Okay, I'm feeling good. Okay, so I can see now that that slightly goes off. So let me make sure that if I were to frame it that I got enough in there. Let's see. Can I make it where I don't cut? See, if I did that, that's going to be more like that. Do I like that? Let's see. Oh, yeah, I'm still feeling that. Okay. <laughs> I don't want the edges to be clipped. I like it. I like it. And it's slightly diagonal to the lady that was like, I wish you'd try diagonal. Here we went. See, I listen to you guys. I read all your comments. I try my best to answer every single comment at some point. And I spend lots of time answering comments at some point, if I'm lucky enough to get tons and tons of people who love painting with us. I might not hit all the comments. I do listen to you and then I try to implement all of your good ideas or my um, pronunciations I try to f I do try to fix those <laughs> oh I so did not like this until now and look at these oh my goodness look at these oh people check it out oh yeah Totally loving that. I doubted the whole time and love it. Love it. 
love it. Check out the two that we did. Oh, yes. People say, what can you do with these? Okay, so you can frame them like under a frame. You can send these as cards. You put on the front of a card. You can make artist cards out of these. You can use these as collage elements. And I don't have any currently, might change later, have any current collage uh, videos up. But I do have some collage classes on Skillshare where I keep all of these and I use these for collage pieces in a larger collage. So what you could do is have like maybe a bunch of old papers and then something like this could be your pop of color and your element of excitement. Um, I love doing that. I love making bookmarks. Oh, these would be perfect gift tags. All kinds of stuff that you can do with yummy papers. And because you've cut out pieces of art out of the middle of it, now you've got something that you're like, whoa, look at this amazing thing that I created. Okay, so I'm pretty happy about our pieces today. That was way cool. I totally didn't think I was getting anything out of this. I almost didn't think you would never see this video. <laughs> But here we are. We made it to the end. We pushed through all the ugly. That's exactly why I do these challenges to push through, problem solve, figure out what can I do next. And at the point that you cut it out, you could say, okay, now what other marks or things does it need? I'm pretty happy with these. I'm not going to keep going and mark make on top of that. But if you're a doodler, doodle marks in there would be great. Zentangle, these would be great for Zentangles. Um, and you could keep going till you're like, okay, I'm done. So I hope you enjoyed painting with me today. I can't wait to see what you're creating with this color palette. You are welcome to tag me on Instagram at Two Little Owls Art. Show me what you're working on. You can join my Facebook art group. Um, I link that below the video along with all of the supplies and some extra goodies down there. Um, and hit that subscribe button and I'll see you the next time I'm doing a color challenge. Mm -hmm.